Good morning. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity of presenting this work. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm going to tell you how we are enabling rapid epigenomic classification of acute leukemia. But first, let me say that uh, I have no conflicts of interest to disclose and that Oxford Nanoport Technologies products are currently for research use only. Let me start giving you an uh, introduction about the current status of acute leukemia diagnostics. I will use a, a real example from Dana Farber. This is a 61 years old patient having fever, fatigue, leukocytosis, and with these symptoms, the doctor suspects of a case of acute leukemia that requires urgent treatment. But which leukemia? Because there are several subtypes of leukemia with distinct prognosis and treatment responses. So currently, to arrive to an accurate diagnosis, multiple tests need to be run in parallel that require different expertise and technologies and as you can see in this example, from sample collection was done uh, aspirate evaluation, and then flow cytometry, panel sequencing, immunohistochemistry, karyotyping. And after four days, the doctor arrived to a final diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia with mutated TP53. So we think this process is time and resources intensive and also does not capture the full heterogeneity of this disease. So the main question behind the project was, how can we make acute leukemia diagnostics rapid? And to answer this question, we went back to the brain tumor experience, where my PI, Volker Overstadt, and other colleagues some years ago showed that doing a DNA methylation profile of brain tumors at that time using Illumina ray technology, it's possible to distinguish between the different tumor entities. So they created this reference court and also trained a machine learning model. So now when there is a new brain tumor sample, this can be profiled. And using this classifier, we can get an accurate classification. And over the years, this has been a huge success. Hundred thousands of samples have been classified with this approach. And recently, we have seen in the community that this can be done in a rapid way, doing a sparse profile of numetilome using nanopore sequencing data. How can we translate this experience to the leukemia field? So we thought that we need at least this milestone from the project. We need to create a DNA methylation-based reference court for leukemia. We want to train a model that is able to process parts data from nanopore sequencing. It's called Marlin, but I will tell you later about this name. And also, we want to test Marlin on both retrospective and prospective cases with the final goal of doing real-time classification. So let me start with the first point. We assembled this reference, comprehensive reference co cohort. And here I would like to highlight the work of Til Steinecke, a student that the honor to mentor and co lead the project with. He did an amazing work collecting all these samples. These are publicly available data. These are all acute leukemia samples provided with the Illumina Ray technology. As you can see, these data are coming from different studies, and uh, I, I want to thank all the authors for making this data public. It's composed by both pediatric and adult cases. And uh, here you can see a map of this data. These are more than 2,000 samples, and each dot represents a sample. So with the array technology, we can provide almost half million CPGs across the genome. And samples that are close together in this map means that they have a similar DNA methylation profile, a similar fingerprint. And uh, first of all, you, we can observe in this map that uh, we can separate the different leukemia lineages. We have the AML, TLL, BLL, and also acute leukemia of a big lineage. And then you start to see we have clusters of samples that share the same color 
And these are the methylation classes that we defined. These are 42 classes. Also, you see some labels on them. And uh, we did a lot of manual creation, a lot of work behind that. And uh, just to give you an understanding where these labels are coming from, I will give you an example. So if we focus on the acute myeloid leukemia lineage, when we overlapped the genetic information and the transcriptomic information on these samples, something was immediately clear. Some of these methylation clusters are driven by specific mutation, like in case of ZBPA or PMR rara. In other cases, we have a, a more heterogeneous situation in terms of genetic alteration, like in the center of this map. But all these AML cases are driven by OX expression. And using methylation, we were actually able to refine this classification and defining nine different groups within the OX-activated AML. So we were very happy about this cohort that we assembled. And the next step was to create a machine learning tool to predict incoming samples profiled with nanopore sequencing. And we love nanopore sequencing because we can sequence native DNA. But the most exciting part for us is that now we can distinguish if there is a metal group in the side design or not. So we can, with the same data, we can call the fingerprint of these tumors. And here you can see some reads we, we produced. Uh, these are aligned to the human genome. This is a genome browser. We can produce very long reads. And you can see in blue, we have hypomethylated regions, and in red, hypermethylated regions. But you can see what's the main challenge here. We have some gaps in the alignment. And this means that, especially in the first minutes of hours of sequencing, what we get are randomly distributed reads across the genome, and we have these gaps. So how can we do uh, a prediction using this kind of data, using our reference court? Here we got inspired by a recent work done on brain tumors from our other colleagues with Sturgeon. We developed Marlin. It's a neural network and stays for methylation and AI-powered rapid uh, leukemia subtype inference. The important part of this neural network is the input layer, where we have all the probes from the array, all the, the covered CPGs, and uh, in the last layer, we have the 42 nodes that correspond to the methylation classes that we want to predict. And the important part is that during training, what we do is to show to Marlin only a very small fraction of the input. So we show only 1% of these CPGs. So we force the model to learn to do the prediction from a, a very uh, always changing small amount of information. And after training, when, when the model is well trained, what we get is a high score for one methylation class and almost zero for all the other classes because all these scores are up to one. So we evaluated the performances of Marlin in cross validation. You can see that at the lineage level, Marlin performs extremely well. And also, we have good performances across all the methylation classes. Some of these classes are very closely related, and we merge those in methylation class families because they are already very relevant for the clinics. Another point we want to test was to address the sparsity, how well Marlin will perform at increasing levels of sparsity. So we introduced sparsity in the cross-validation data, and what we observed is that the performances remain stable up to 97% of sparsity, that is around 10,000 probes. So this is to, gave us an understanding of the limit of, at which we uh, expect the performances of Marlin to drop. But then we want to test Marlin on real nanopore sequencing sample. And here we teamed up with uh, other colleagues at Dana Farber, uh, with Evan Chen and the Griffin Lab, uh, Gay, uh, Gabe, uh, Reyes, and Andre. And uh, we collected a cohort of 19 acute leukemia samples from the biobank. 
uh, for which we already have all the information about the conventional diagnostics. We perform nanopore sequencing. We call the methylation that we use as an input for Marlin. Then we also use the read coverage to create copy number profile. And also for some of these samples, we did uh, uh, deep sequencing to reveal some uh, fusion. And here we show you the results of Marlin. I know it's a busy slide, but I will guide you through. So each row here is a sample. You can see in the first column the, the code, the ID of that sample. And then after is the initial diagnosis according to the WHO. Then we have some genetic alteration that were present in these samples. And in the colored bars, you see the scores that came out of Marlin. And also, we report the methylation class that got the highest score. The main message that I want to give you here is that in 95% of the cases, we got a methylation class prediction that was concordant with initial diagnosis. Even more, in seven of these cases, we were able to refine the classification. For instance, all these AML MPN1 mutated cases, we were able to assign one of the methylation classes that we defined in our reference court. And one sample caught our attention in particular is sample two that uh, wa was annotated as BLL non otherwise specified but for Marlin was uh, DAX4 rearranged BLL. DAX4 is a cryptic rearrangement that occurs in telomeric region and is currently not tested in the clinics. So we were wondering if this was a, a real and uh, accurate uh, classification. So what we did was to resequence these samples in, with the Promethean platform and other two samples for which we already knew there was a fusion. And here in these plots, each row is a read. And uh, when two parts of the same read are mapping to different genomic locations, they are supporting the presence of, of fusion. So in the first two samples we used as a validation, we were able to find multiple reads supporting RANX1 fusion and PML RARA. And also we were very happy to find in our sample too multiple reads showing the rearrangement of DAX4 in the IGH locus. These are telomeric region, it's very hard to map reads there, but thanks to the, these very long reads, we were able to find them. What I want to stress about here is that Marlin predicted a DAX4 rearranged case just from the methylome, and then independently we validated the presence of the rearrangement. And then to the exciting part, we want to test Marlin on prospective cases because we want to do real-time prediction. And you can see here our setup, and the main question we want to answer was how long it will take from sample collection until we get a high confidence score. Do you remember the first case I showed you at the beginning? So in reality, what we did was from sample collection, we started in parallel our framework with the conventional diagnostics. And you can see in the first hour already DNA was extracted and the library was ready for nanopore sequencing. After starting the sequencing, we generated prediction every 10 minutes while the data were coming out of the, the mini node. And, uh, you can see that Marlin generated high confidence after 40 minutes of sequencing for a methylation class TP53 aneuploidy. And uh, this matched very well with the conventional diagnostics, the results that we got four days later. At the end of the sequencing also, we were able to generate a very high resolution copy number profile that matched very well with the karyotyping. So this was actually some months ago, and uh, we have done this in multiple samples, always running in parallel our framework with the conventional one. And often what we observe is that in less than two hours from sample collection, we get the same classification that we will get after days. 
What is next for us? We want to address the, the main challenge of this approach is tumor purity. Because if there is not enough to DNA, tumor DNA in the sample, what we get is a control class. And this could, could be relevant also for minimal residual disease monitoring. We want to extend the prospective cohort. We want to do more real-time classification. And we have a study already approved. It's going to start soon. Also, we want to establish a DNA methylation and AI-powered uh, AL diagnostics, a consortium. And uh, re regard to this, I would like to invite you to use Marlin. So this is the GitHub repository. Uh, you can download the model, and there are all the scripts required to do the real-time classification. We also have a beta version of a web app where a user can upload the methylation calls, and they will receive in minutes the prediction. What are the practical benefits of this approach? First of all is the turnaround time. So we are moving acute leukemia diagnostics from several days to a few hours. Uh, we think this can guide uh, further genetic analysis and may reveal cryptic events like the ducts for rearrangement. We think we can also refine the genetic-based classification with this approach. And also, this framework is very easy to implement anywhere in the world, especially for those settings with uh, limited resources and access to molecular diagnostics. To sum up, I showed you today that we demonstrated the feasibility of rapid epigenomic classification of acute leukemia. And uh, today, I'm happy to share that this work is going to be published soon. I would like to thank the amazing team behind this work, Evan Chen from the clinical side, the Griffith Lab with Gabe, Reyes, Andre, and the computational part done by Ovestad Lab, Volker, and Thiel, and also our collaborators and our fundings. And uh, let, let me hand with this picture. This is us when we did, for the first time, the real-time prediction with Marlin. You can see we were very happy. But uh, we, were, we were way more happy four days later when we got the results from the conventional diagnostics that confirmed that our prediction was correct. So with this, I would like to thank you very much and take any questions.